So what is a positive definite function? A positive semi-definite function. So we say a function v, okay, and can be function of t and x. This is positive semi-definite. If this holds true, where alpha is any alpha is a strictly increasing function. So meaning, if I can lower bound this function by another strictly increasing function which increases with the norm of x. So then this function is uh, positive semi-definite. We also need that v of 0 is 0. So at the equilibrium, this function is 0. So the, I mean, so we are trying to construct something called Lyapunov function. So energy should be 0 at the equilibrium. So v of 0 is 0 and this holds true, right? So that means alpha as norm of x is equal to 0 because origin is equilibrium and this function also evaluates to 0 right because it is lower bounded and strictly inked. so it is a positive function and it looks something like this. So an alpha your alpha function can look something like this right so norm of x this is alpha times this is alpha of norm of x this function and your positive this particular function v can be any function on above it right. So this function as norm of x goes to infinity, this function need not go to in, uh, infinity. So this like for instance, 1 minus e to the negative x something like this right. So this function need not go to infinity, okay. But if, if uh, x goes to infinity implies that this function also goes to infinity then we call it positive definite, then V is positive definite. So because this V is lower bounded by this particular strictly increasing function and as norm of x goes to infinity, V is, I mean V is always up, like basically upper bounds this function, so V has to go to infinity, right. So this imparts something called radial unboundedness to your function. It is a radial unboundedness property. So as, as you move away from the equilibrium or the origin, you grow larger and larger and keep growing larger. So it's, it's, it basically it starts growing unbounded and in a, in an example would be V of x is, if I choose it to be half x square, so this is a positive definite function because as x go, norm of x goes to infinity, whether it is plus infinity minus infinity, V of x also goes to infinity, right and V of 0 is 0, okay. So this is an example of a positive definite function. Alpha is a function, it is not a constant, it's just like f of x you write it, I mean alpha is a function, it is a strictly increasing function, okay. So v is negative definite, if minus v is positive definite. So why do we care about the negative definiteness? Positive definiteness, I mean you understand that we want this like as the system is far, like as let us say the x is farther away from the equilibrium, you are, I mean the system is likely to have more and more energy, right? So that is the positive definiteness part. Why do we care about the negative definiteness? Yeah, so the time derivative of that particular function, we want that to be act like a negative definite function, right? Or at least closer to negative definite function so that we can say that uh, that is that's going to decrease and eventually go to going eventually go to 0, okay. So using these ideas, so this kind of function V is called a Lyapunov function and using this idea we can characterize whether a system is stable uh, or whether an equilibrium, sorry, whether an equilibrium is stable, asymptotically stable, exponentially stable and so on. So it is stable in the sense of Lyapunov if v of x is greater than or equal to 0 for every x 
or greater than or equal to 0 is fine or you can say it's p of x is greater than 0 yeah greater than 0 for every x okay v of 0 is 0 and v dot x is less than or equal to 0 okay so if that's the case then we say that uh, the equilibrium is stable why because whatever energy you have we know that at uh, we at least we are not putting in more energy right so v dot is negative definite or negative semi definite rather so it may we may still be at the same energy level but we are not going to be increasing the energy of this uh, system so we are not going to go unboundedness unbounded and since stability as i said intuitively is intuitively related to boundedness so this is going to be stable the equilibrium is going to be stable is this clear so that would be that would be one way to characterize uh, stability of an equilibrium whether it's stable what about asymptotic stability if we can find a function lyapunov function v for asymptotically stable equilibria if first of all v is positive definite so meaning that v of x is 0 v0 is 0 and what about v dot strictly less than 0 for all x so then that means uh, we are always decreasing the energy of the system and this would be something called asymptotically stable or locally asymptotically stable but we can provide globally global guarantees if uh, v is radially unbounded so the moment it becomes radially unbounded then we can provide uh, global guarantees but this is this is how you sort of characterize the asymptotic stability of the equilibrium point okay what about exponential so again we want v to be positive definite so this thing is again there what about v dot let's say i get v dot is less than in what do some alpha v so what does imply uh, the equilibrium to be exponentially stable not even if it's class k function what what does imply exponentially stable So yeah, so yeah, first of all alpha is greater than 0, let us just assume this, sure, no, so it, it would imply that v is exponentially stable or v converges exponentially fast, it does not say anything about x, v is a function of x, right. So all it says is that v converges exponentially fast or decays exponentially fast, but it does not say anything about what your x is going to look like, okay second v same v so i mean had this been directly in terms of x then you would have said that x converges x decays exponentially fast or x converges to equilibrium exponentially fast this i mean all we can say about this is that v can v as a function of x converges to uh, v0 exponentially fast but it doesn't directly translate to uh, x converging to e uh, equilibrium exponentially fast right I mean it can be an arbitrary function of x and x may uh, x may just be oscillating a lot even though it is converging. So all you can say is that x is like I mean the equilibrium is asymptotically stable and not even as. So if this is the condition you can only say that it is just with these you cannot guarantee that it is uh, ex exponentially stable all you can say is it is still asymptotically stable. So there are more things that we need to sh show or uh, in order to guarantee that an exponential convergence in v would also imply an exponential convergence in x and for that uh, these conditions are so so this xt converges exponentially
the current, it only guarantees exponential convergence of uh, v, right. So then what do we need to uh, show in order to guarantee that this would like I mean a condition in v would also imply uh, con like an exponential convergence in v would also imply an exponential convergence in x and for that we first have to show that v of x is sandwiched between I think a half for all right. They using alpha one and alpha two. Let me use those as so. It's sandwiched between so again alpha one and alpha two greater than zero. Okay, v dot that's less than or equal to some alpha three x square. If these two are satisfied, and obviously v zero is I mean since x is equal to 0 and it's sandwiched between alpha 1 and alpha 2 like this. So, v 0 is going to be 0. So, if these if these conditions are satisfied then you can say that trajectories they converge exponentially fast or x converges exponentially fast. So, one of the conditions or the definition for exponential con uh, ex exponential stability of uh, the equilibrium was x t was m e to the negative alpha t minus t naught right. And how does this m and alpha are related to uh, these coefficients alpha 1, alpha 2 and alpha 3. So, you can show that m is going to be less than equal to alpha 2 over alpha 1 power half and alpha is going to be greater than equal to alpha 3 over 2 alpha 2. But then only if v satisfies these uh, conditions that is when you can guarantee that x also converges exponentially fast ok. So, as I said finite and fixed time stability we are going to look at it in due course of time. So, because those are sort of uh, relatively recent, uh, but then in the most of the background on stability and sort of marrying stability of dynamic of equilibrium of dynamical systems to convergence behavior in optimization algorithms. So, that would be more or less clear from uh, what we have uh, looked at so far. So, let us look at a few examples. <coughs> So, a spring mass tamper system, I believe everyone is so you have spring of like spring constant k, you have a damper with coefficient v and a mass with m. And let us say we denote by q the position of this uh, mass and q dot is the velocity, right. So, what could be a good choice or a candidate for Lyapunov function here? So, in some sense energy of the system and that can be half k q square right. And what is the dynamical system underlying dynamical system here? So, m q double dot plus b q dot plus k q equal to 0 ok. That is the dynamical system that we have right. So, how do we bring this first of all how do we bring this dynamical system in a form x dot is equal to g x. So, what what is going to be x here q and q dot right. So, we so that would be q and q dot. So, d by d t of x or x dot would be So, you get q dot here, you get q double dot here and q double dot you can write it as minus k over m times q minus b over m times ok. So, this is x dot this whole thing and this is g of x. So, what is the uh, equilibrium of this particular dynamical system? 0 comma 0 right why because when you said g of x equal to 0 that means q dot is equal to 0 and if q dot is equal to 0 this term is 0 and because this whole term is also 0 that means q is also 0 right. So, so x equal to 0 0 is the equilibrium. So, that is the equilibrium. So, origin is the equilibrium. Now, let us try and see what 
kind of stability guarantees we can provide for this particular equilibrium, right? Is it stable? Is it asymptotically stable? Is it exponentially stable and so on? So what do we need to do in order to uh, characterize the stability of this equilibrium? We have to look at uh, how V dot behaves, right? First of all, is it a positive definite function, right? Because I can write V as half Q, Q dot. You have K here. Right, and this this matrix is positive definite matrix because k and m are greater than zero. So this is positive definite matrix. So this is a positive definite function. In fact, also radially unbounded, right? As q dot norm of q dot goes to zero and norm of q goes to zero, this grows radially unbounded. So this is radially unbounded as well. So we have all the nicer properties, and v of zero is also zero. So we have all the nicer properties. So v is a positive definite function. Let's see what how v dot looks like. So again, V is half k q square. V dot would be and so this particular term m q double dot we can write it in terms of the, so this would be q dot times. So what is m q double dot? That is this particular term over here, right? So that becomes and this basically gives us minus b q dot square which is negative semi definite, right? So this is, you cannot say this is less than 0, strictly less than 0 for, this is in fact less than equal to 0. Why less than equal to 0 and not strictly less than 0 for every, let us say for every x? Yeah, so it is only a quadratic function of only q dot, right? So that means no matter what your q is, q need not be the equilibrium point, right? So there are points of the form q comma 0 such that this particular term is still equal to 0. So this is negative semi-definite and not negative definite. So all we can say is it is less than equal to 0. So V is positive definite, V dot is less than equal to 0. So therefore the equilibrium is, as of now we can just say that it is the equilibrium is stable. So V is greater than equal, basically greater than 0 for every x not equal to x equilibrium. V of 0 is 0 and V dot is less than equal to 0 for every x. So with these three, we can only guarantee stability. From our observation, we know that this system is, uh, the equilibrium is not just stable, but it is going to be at least asymptotically stable, right? So we know that it's, it, ju it just does not stay bounded, but it also eventually converges to the it, its equilibrium point, right? So how can we argue something like that from here? So the only way if I try to find points such that V dot is identically equal to 0. So for that to happen, this term is identically equal to 0. So if Q dot is identically equal to 0, right? If Q dot is identically equal to 0, uh, so for all time t. So the only way that so it, it may happen that V dot at one particular, so the, the whole reason, uh, the reason that V dot is less than equal to 0 with V dot less than equal to 0, we can only uh, claim stability is because, I mean, it may happen that, uh, so momentarily it hits 0, but if it's again starts becoming negative, then we are fine, right? Because it would, in the next, next time instant, it would still be decreasing. The only issue would come up if it becomes identically equal to 0, that it hits a particular point and on that point it becomes identically equal to 0 which is not the equilibrium point, right? So if V dot, if Q dot becomes identically equal to 0, uh, so that means x, for this to happen, if Q dot is identically equal to 0, so x, like the x dot is equal to 0 only if Q 
is equal to 0, right? So, because q dot is identically equal to 0, so q is equal to 0. So, that means even, so using invariance principle, you can guarantee that this is going to be asymptotically, because even for points when it is, uh, so even for points uh, in like this, which for which, which are not equilibrium, but uh, this thing is momentarily equal to 0, it basically soon uh, escapes that particular point and it again starts becoming negative. So, from there you can, you can argue that it, I mean the equilibrium is asymptotically stable. So, this, this is one particular choice of Lyapunov function that we worked with. So, let me choose a different, so same example, same problem, but now we choose a diff slightly different Lyapunov function and let us see if we can guarantee something more, okay. So, now this time we are going to be choosing v of x to be uh, half q q dot. So, some small epsilon m, epsilon times m. So, depending on the value of epsilon, I can always make this function positive definite, right? I can find a value of epsilon such that this function is positive definite. So, v is going to be positive definite, radially unbounded. So, all the nicer properties are there. Now, let us now take the, uh, consider v dot. And if you take v dot here, you can show that this v dot turns out to be and again for a suitable choice of epsilon, you can make this function negative definite, v dot to be negative definite. So, now you see that by choosing a different Lyapunov function altogether, the same equilibrium which at best we could guarantee to be asymptotically stable, we can actually now in fact guarantee it. Why? Because first of all, if I look at the maximum eigenvalue of this particular matrix here, it is positive definite matrix. So, V of x is going to be bounded by alpha 3 which is going to be ma lambda max of this A. Let us, let us call this matrix A. Okay. And V dot and if I call this matrix, let us say delta. <coughs> so, V dot is going to be less than equal to. So, minus, yeah. So, the minimum, if, if I like it is minus lambda. So, lambda of this. So, it has this kind of thing, right? And now, you can carry, we can guarantee that it is in fact, it is going to be equilibrium is going to be as exponentially stable. Okay. So, the same equilibrium for which we could not by choosing a different Lyapunov function, we could say more about it, right? So, now we can say that not only it converges asymptotically fast, in fact, it converges exponentially fast. So, there is a stronger convergence rate and in order to obtain that we had to choose this Lyapunov function and as I, as I said, uh, Lyapunov uh, in a, for his PhD work, he was trying to come up with a way through which you can construct these Lyapunov functions, but I mean it is still an open problem constructing this Lyapunov function in for a general system where you can always guarantee like even if you know that let us say it is exponentially stable equilibrium, uh, I mean to be able to find a Lyapunov function through which you can show that, uh, that is something very uh, like very tricky in general and it comes from experience, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So, yeah, we constructed in such a way that so that V dot turns out to be negative definite. Yeah, there is no physical significance, yeah. yeah. No, there is no physical significance. So, that is why, that is why I mean it is difficult to come up with a suitable choice of Lyapunov functions. Because I mean it is, I mean there is some physical significance in the sense that if you look at the half k q square and half uh, m q dot square, those are still going to be there, but there is going to be some cross terms as well between q and q dot, right. And uh, it does not come, like there is no physical intuition behind it. Maybe there is, there will be a physical intuition if you sort of 
transform these points in another, uh, like using some kind of transformation, you transform them into another space where, and construct the, this energy function in that space. Then it would, it may, may make sense, but yeah, in general, no. There is no, I mean, in this case, there, in this example, at least, there is no direct physical significance. So, this basically also explains the difficulty of choosing how to, be, like, choose a good, suitable Lyapunov function, right? Because it's, like, as you can see that it, there is no intuition behind, I mean, so one would, like, in this case, I believe people would have arrived at this particular Lyapunov function, knowing that it, it's uh, exponentially, I mean, the equilibrium is exponentially stable, and then trying to construct using, I mean, sort of, basically a converse way to construct, uh, just trying out different, uh, different combinations, and it's so worked out for this particular case, okay? All right, so. If we don't know if the system is exponentially stable, we will have to try out all the functions and then we see error comes. Yeah, yeah, so that, that is another challenge. So, I mean, at least to your SQ, uh, in the context of optimization, it wouldn't be too difficult to choose Lyapunov functions because there aren't many choices, honestly, for convex optimization. So, what would be a good proxy? So, coming back to optimization, and to start with, let's let's just focus on simple gradient flow. So, to start with, we are going to focus on gradient flows, which are of the form x dot is. So, what could be a good choice for uh, Lyapunov function? So, let's, so let's also assume some structure. So, let's say that, well, f is mu strongly convex. So, what is one particular characterization of, of first order condition for convexity that the gradient of f should be 0, right? So, a good choice of Lyapunov function can be half Okay, right. And now if I take v dot, if I consider v dot, so that becomes gradient of f transpose Hn f times x dot. Okay, that why? Because I can write this as <coughs> half gradient f transpose gradient f, and the derivative of the gradient f is Hn. So this is what it would be, right? So if the function is mu strongly convex. We know that. So, since f is mu strongly convex, this implies Hn of f mu times identity, right? So, this would mean, so we will come to this part later, but using this dynamical system, what is x dot equal to? Negative of gradient of f. So, I can write this as minus gradient f transpose Hn f times gradient f. And if I use this property now, so this is nothing but v dot is less than equal to minus mu times, right? And what is this term equal to? Twice of v, right? Twice of the Lyapunov function. So what, what can we argue? So v dot is less than equal to minus 2 mu v. So at least we know that the Lyapunov function converges uh, exponentially fast. That's something that we know. Okay. What about the convergence of x, exponential convergence of x to uh, z, like let's say x to x star. How can we guarantee that? So, lower bound is like from here. Uh, So, it is not that straightforward. So, un unless let us say you assume that f is also L smooth. So, you get bound one way. If you assume f is mu is strongly convex, you get bound another way. And then from there, you can potentially guarantee that the convergence to x star is also going to be exponentially fast. But without assuming L smoothness, as of now, I mean we cannot guarantee, at least from this analysis, we cannot guarantee that this is going to be exponential. Like convergence of x to x star is going to be exponentially fast, but convergence of uh, gradient f to 0, that is going to be exponentially fast, okay? So, this is one particular candidate of Lyapunov uh, function. What else can we think of? Let us say, uh, now I assume, so assume 
So this time we assume that f is not strongly convex, but f satisfies real inequality. So what is PLN? We can. No, I'm not saying it won't converge to the equilibrium. X would converge to the equilibrium or the optimal solution, but does X converge exponentially fast to X star? That we cannot say. From this exercise, we can say that V converges exponentially fast to zero, right? And that would mean that gradient of f converges exponentially fast to 0, but it does not say anything about x converging uh, to exponentially fast to 0. So, this was the if I look at uh, if I assume the case setting where f is uh, satisfies pn inequality with coefficient mu. So, this turns out to be mu f of x minus f star, right. So, now if I if I look at this particular term, is this term greater than or equal to 0? it is right at the optimal value it is going to be 0, but other than optimal it is going to be greater than or equal to 0. That can be another suitable choice of Lyapunov function right. And in this case because we know that f satisfies pure inequality it may actually make sense to choose this kind of Lyapunov function. So, let us do that. So, let us simply choose this as your Lyapunov function. It is equal to 0 at x star, it is greater than 0 like I mean assuming that the pure inequality is uh, is there with unique minimizer. It is strictly greater than 0 outside of that right. So, what is v dot then? Gradient of f transpose x dot ok, which is gradient of f transpose negative of gradient of f right, which is basically saying this particular term ok, right. Now, I can write this as uh, minus 1 over 2 mu and then I also multiplied by 2 mu and this is going to be less than or equal to minus 2 mu times this particular term which by definition is or fear inequality this is what it is right. And I get v dot is less than or equal to minus 2 mu v the same condition right. So, we know that v converges exponentially fast ok. So, this pretty much gives you an idea like depending on the kind of assumptions that you make on the function this basically gives you an idea as to what kind of Lyapunov function that you can potentially work with right. So, in this case uh, and obviously I mean we want this property that v should be equal to 0 at the uh, optimal solution right. So, there are not many ways through which you can characterize optimality one is either through this or something like this right. So, in most cases in fact you are going to see that these are the Lyapunov functions that we are going to be working with when designing or analyzing a particular optimization algorithm. Is this clear? So, with this uh, I would like to end today's lecture unless there are any other questions. Sorry yeah. So, in order to guarantee exponential convergence of x to x star we would need to assume that we need, we would need to assume L smoothness. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No, wait, why mu square? So, this is the inequality, oh sorry, <coughs> here inequality does my bad. I had already included mu here. So, this is your peer inequality. So, yeah, this is the inequality here. Because f of x is always going to be greater than or equal to f star right. Only at the optimal value it is going to achieve minimum everywhere else it is going to be greater than or equal to minimum right. So, let us say f of x is x square or let us say f of x is x minus 1 square whole square. So, at x equal to 1 it is going to be 0 everywhere else it is going to be something greater than 0 right. So, f of x is always going to exceed f star. So, then it is positive semi definite right. Yeah, f star is the optimal. So, that is the definition of pure inequality we consider the optimal f. Yeah, 
but then you it it is pure inequality would still imply that you have a uh, it's non non convex that's fine but you have this kind of uh, invex function right so you st take either you will have unique minimizer or you'll have it to be a constant function if you look at this particular form so either it will be a unique minimizer like this or this a simple function like this would also a constant function is also satisfies pure inequality you won't have man too many cases if it's pure inequality plus convex then it basically becomes a previous case which is strongly convex okay anything else so even for non convex cases the characterization of local minima is through uh, like gradient of f or being zero or f of x f of x minus f star being zero and so on right Same as the yeah, the same mu of strong convexity. Because every strongly convex function also satisfies pure inequality, right? So with the same mu. Either single minima or even a constant function also satisfies. I mean, is a but then yeah. Okay.